Hello everyone. Just trying to get everything centered here. And we are going to be doing some scrap wood signs uh, with Mod Podge transfer. These are the questions that I get the, asked the most on my channel. And I want to today answer any of your questions. If you're having a hard time doing this technique, um, I can maybe guide you along and, uh, and help you out. So I have all of these scrap pieces of wood. They have been painted with some white chalk paint and some red chalk paint. I've distressed them. I've already put my graphics on these because we have to let them sit for uh, 24 hours. So I put them all together so I could hop on today and then finish them off and show you. So these were just printed off on my laser printer using regular computer paper. And all of these had to have the, the text reversed. When you're doing this technique, you have to make sure you've reversed the text. If not, your words are gonna be backwards after you've made these signs. And I put a light coat of Mod Podge on the paper, placed them on the wood, made sure there was no bubbles and wrinkles, got them pushed in really well, set them aside, and let them dry for 24 hours. And that brings us to today. I have all of these made with all, uh, all kinds of fun Christmas graphics, and uh, we're gonna do them up together. So hop in the comments if you have any questions with this technique while I'm here, and I can show you or I can guide you along. I can give you some ideas uh, to help you out. And um, let's get started. So we're gonna get most of these out of the way here. I also love to know where everybody's watching from, so Head to the comments, let me know where you're watching from, what country, and uh, it's kind of fun for all of us here to hang out with all of our crafting friends. Okay, so the first one, and this, all of this wood, free wood, it was just given to me, and um, I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit so you can see better. This was all given to me, free wood. It's pro, I think it was actually like, wainscoting and I just cut it up into smaller sizes. These make beautiful shelf sitters. You don't even have to put any hanger on the back. You can just set them on a little shelf and they make really great stocking stuffers, uh, little gifts that you can tuck in with another bigger gift maybe and you can personalize them. So many ways that you can, you can do these little signs with the Mod Podge mat. Now a lot of, one question that I get asked a lot is do I have to use a Mod Podge mat? You don't have to. You can um, also use the Mod Podge gloss, but just be mindful that you're gonna have a glossy finish when you've finished your sign. So that's the only difference between the Mod Podge mat and gloss. You can use either, it'll work. And we have, we've got Michigan in here and Georgia. We got Montreal, Quebec, and another Michigan. We got Germany. Uh, inkjet or laser printer? How are these sealed without smearing? Okay, we got our first question in here. So I do my signs with a laser printer much easier. If you're gonna be doing a lot of crafting, it is best to get yourself a laser printer, especially if you're gonna be doing this technique. It can be done with an inkjet printer, but your ink is gonna smear easier and it's gonna, you're gonna have to go slower and you're gonna have to work in very small areas if you're using an inkjet. It can be done, it just takes a little bit more patience. Uh, so that's to answer that question. Um, and it, after you've rubbed the paper off, it's not gonna smear anymore and you can just seal them up with some polyacrylic sealer. How strict is the 24 hours when drying the Mod Podge? Is it exact or next day? For example, can I apply at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and continue in the next morning? Great question. Okay, so for me, I find as long as I'm leaving them overnight, I can do some signs that, that they, they say 24 hours. I've done them sooner. A lot of it's gonna depend on your weather. If it's dry and hot, they're gonna dry really quickly. You can probably get away with doing them six hours later if it's really hot and dry. If it's high humidity and it's wet, 
you're gonna need the 24 hours. So you're just gonna kind of have to gauge it with what your area is like at that time when you're doing your signs. These ones I made up, it's it was dry here yesterday. I made these up around supper time and um, they're ready to go now. So it's not quite 24 hours. So that really it's dependent on the weather. And we got Oregon, we got West Virginia, we got Puerto Rico, Ann Arbor, Wales. Thanks for joining in guys. I have so much fun hanging out here and uh, crafting with everyone. Okay, so this is just a little dish of water and I just have an old rag. It's just an old piece of a sweatshirt and it works the best. And you're just gonna dampen that paper until you can just start to see the graphics show through. One thing that I should mention, make sure you're buying cheap computer paper. You do not wanna buy expensive computer paper. If you're buying expensive computer paper, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have more paper to rub off, which makes sense, right? So if you're using a cheap computer paper, when you're doing this process, you're not rubbing off as much paper. I really like the Amazon Basics paper. It's really cheap paper and it works really well and uh, it's easy to rub it all off. And as you can see, I'm just taking my fingers and I'm just, I like to start in the middle, go in a circular motion and the paper will roll up underneath your fingers and leave the graphic on your sign, uh, almost like magic. I love this technique. I do so many of these and there's so many possibilities and you can see it rubs off really easy. Another question that I get asked a lot, because a lot of my friends, they're starting to get maybe a little bit of arthritis in their fingers, and they're trying to find an easier way um, to rub off the paper without using their fingers. You can do the first layer of paper with a little rag, but I find to finish off your sign, you really need to use your fingertips because you can't feel that paper rolling up underneath if you're just using a rag. And um, I, I think you'll end up rubbing off some of that graphic by mistake because you won't be able to feel with your fingers how much paper is actually left. Um, thanks for the clarification on the drying time. It makes perfect sense. Yep, I'm glad that was helpful. First time I did this, I got a big blister on my finger. Oh, Jolene. Okay, so if you've gotten a big blister on your finger, you're probably rubbing too hard. You don't have to rub very hard. I'm just doing light pressure, little circles, and it's coming off really easy. That being said, if you're just starting, it's gonna take you a little bit of practice to get the feel of it and what works and what doesn't work. Uh, if you have gotten like blisters and you really went at it and <laughs> you, you don't need to rub that hard. Try again and just rub lightly and maybe you might have to do it for a little bit longer, but it'll all come off. And you can see right now, like I can feel underneath here, there's no more paper. There's no more paper rub rubbing off. It's nice and clean and all done. So now what I'll do with this step where at this step where we're at now, you can seal it up with your Mod Podge. I don't like Mod Podge as a top coat. I just find it's kind of thick. It kind of has a cloudy appearance. So when I'm sealing up my signs, I like to do a polyacrylic sealer and, uh, and use that as a top sealer. And that works really well. Make sure you're using a water-based polyacrylic sealer or it will yellow over time. So that's one thing that you should keep in mind too. So that's finished. Little Merry Christmas, I just need to seal it up. I don't need to put anything on the back because it'll be a little shelf sitter. And that's it. Um, can you spritz more water? So what I like to do is, I'm gonna just start this one and I'll show you. You can spritz more water on it. What I like to do is I'll start rubbing and if I find that it's getting a little bit dry, I just dip my fingers back in the water and then go back with that little bit of water on my fingers and start rubbing again. If you're introducing too much water on your graphic, you might have a tendency to start rubbing off your graphic because you're gonna activate that Mod Podge, if that makes sense. If you're putting too, because Mod Podge is, it, it's a glue. So if you're, if you're introducing too much water to it, it's gonna get soft. So you don't wanna put a whole bunch of water on, just dipping your fingers back in after and working on one little area, that's enough water to um, get that paper off. 
water-based yes a polyacrylic water-based sealer is perfect to seal these signs up when you're all done and i love this graphic north pole milk and cookies all of these graphics on all of these little shelf sitters that i'm doing today are also available in my etsy store uh actually my etsy store is all on sale right now um so all my Christmas stuff. So if you want to hop over there, you can grab them all for 50% off right now too. And I've got some Christmas bundles that you can have a look at. All of these graphics are really good sellers when you're putting them on your DIYs. So have a look around, see if there's something that you like and uh, grab some of these graphics and give this technique a try. That one's rubbing off really well. Um, I am going to try printing font in white to add a white, a black painted background. Does the paper leave a white hue? I honestly, I don't know of a printer that prints in white. So I'm not quite sure if you can do that. If you are rubbing off all of the paper and you don't feel any paper underneath your fingers, you're not gonna get a white hue. If you're getting a white hue, that means that you need to dip your finger back in the water Go back over that graphic until you don't feel any paper rubbing off again because that white hue is computer paper that is still left on your project from uh, the uh, not being rubbed off. Finally, we can use that cheap, com I know, finally we can use that cheap computer paper that we bought that hasn't been any good for anything else other than this project. That's right, the cheapest stuff you can find. I've had um, crafting friends that have tried this technique. They didn't have a printer, so they had headed to uh, um, Staples and had some of my graphics printed at Staples and then we're having a bugger of a time making it work. Well, the issue was nothing that they were doing, but when you're going to Staples, they are using really, really good quality paper so trying to rub all of that paper off was horrendous. So if you don't have a printer and you're heading to a stationery store, ask them to use cheap computer paper to print on for you and that will make your life much easier. Um, can you put this on plastic? So that Susan has asked this. So yes, you can if you paint your plastic with a chalk paint base first. This technique works the best on chalk paint. If you're trying to do it on a surface that doesn't have any chalk paint on it, it's really tricky. It can be done, I can do it, but I've got lots and lots and lots of practice. If you're just new starting, you wanna have that chalk painted base and it's even tricky to do on latex or acrylic. So mix up a little bit of the uh, chalk paint and then tr and then put it on your plastic and then do your graphic transfer the only thing that you should keep in mind if you're doing if you're doing it on plastic and you're painting plastic prime your plastic first and then put the chalk paint on otherwise it's not going to stick really well i hope that helps um i did the exact graphic a couple of weeks ago and finished it in mod podge glitter oh what a great idea to add a little bit of mod podge glitter that would be beautiful Okay, so I can't feel any paper rubbing off. That one's done. It is ready to be sealed up. This is a little bit of a thicker piece of wood. It's a really nice little shelf sitter. North Pole Milk and Cookies, done. Let's do the next one. Uh, good quality paper, laser ink, don't per, <laughs> yeah. So actually, yes, if you are uh, at work and you're using your laser printer at work, you're probably using really quality paper too, so. Just kind of ask before you have stuff printed uh, what, I don't know what the word is, the weight. I think it's the weight of the paper, what the weight of the paper is and that you want the cheapest quality paper that you can get uh, for this technique. I use chalk paint on glass too. Yeah, I paint glass all the time. I have found though painting glass, I always put a spritz of primer on it first before I paint with the chalk paint. It just really ensures that it's gonna stick really well. So I've introduced that step first when I'm painting glass and spritz it with a little bit of primer, add your chalk paint, and then you can put your graphics on top of it from there. It's a great way to upcycle all those glass jars and bottles by painting them and adding some really pretty graphics. Okay, this one, jingle all the way. 
what kind of printer am I using? So I am using a laser printer made by Brother. Uh, I, I, I will put the link to that printer in the description after I finish this live. It has been an old faithful. It has worked so well for me. I've never had any problems with it. I don't even buy the real ink for it or toner. I guess it's toner in a laser printer. Uh, I buy it refilled off of eBay and it lasts forever and it works really well. So I'll put that link to that brother laser printer down in the description after I'm finished here. It's worth checking out and it's not that expensive anymore. It's uh, it's under $130, I think. Their laser printers have really come down in price. So if you're in the market to get a new printer and you're a crafter, I would skip the, the inkjet printer and go right to a laser printer. Project. <laughs> Michelle, she's, uh, it must be my Canadian accent. Project. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm from New York. Is Thanksgiving the same day in Canada? We actually had Thanksgiving on October. Our Thanksgiving is early. I think it was the 11th. 11th or 12th we had our Thanksgiving. So we had that holiday a few weeks back. Now I know you guys have yours the end of November. So we're ahead of you. We've already finished our Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm going to just dip my finger in the water just a little bit. Circular motions and you can feel whether that paper is balling up underneath that piece of wood. And sometimes I just like to pick it up and you can just change up a little bit the way you're rubbing. See, now I'm rubbing this way and I can feel all kinds of paper coming off just by changing the angle that I'm doing. And just do circular motions. And it's one of those things where you think you have it all and then you go in with a little bit of water and you realize that you didn't have it all. So just take your time. I find this process really relaxing. I'll put a whole bunch together uh, just like I am right now and I'll just sit, I'll put on a good movie or I'll put on a podcast and I'll just put them together and finish them up. And I really enjoy that. Would it not be better to cut off much of the blank paper as possible around the script. So you can, but I'll tell you what happens. This one's all finished. We're gonna set this one aside. We're gonna start this one. I think this is the same one as this one. I did some doubles here. This is a Merry Christmas. You can cut a lot of the paper off, but what you have to think about is Mod Podge is a glue and it's, a, it's thick. So sometimes, you will see the outline of the Mod Podge where you ended it or where it is cut out around the graphic. That You can't avoid that because Mod Podge is a thick glue. So the way you can avoid seeing that outline all around the graphic is to cut your piece of paper approximately around the same size as your piece of wood and then it's going to blend in better. I just find when you take away too much of the paper around the words you're gonna see, it's gonna look, you're gonna be able to see it. I just find that, that that's what happens. I hope that helps. Uh, how cute would that be to tie a ribbon on that sign with some small Dollar Tree jingle bells? I know, wouldn't that be cute on this one? Could put a little bow in the corner, add a few little bells. You could make those little bells rusty and add them if you wanted that rustic touch. That's a great idea. Um, Meredith is just joining in. I'm a little late, but do you spray paint your base coat first? No, my base coat is just red chalk paint. It's just red chalk paint that I've made myself. I make all of my own chalk paint. If you're buying if it, uh, chalk paint, it can get really pricey. And especially if you want a whole bunch of different colors. So I just make my own. So it was my homemade chalk paint recipe that I did in the red paint as the base. And then on top of that, I did my white chalk paint and then I distressed the wood and then I added my graphics. You've sanded after that, after gluing on? No, I sanded before I glued my transfers on. So I painted, let it dry, sanded and distressed it and then added my graphics after it was all sanded and done. 
okay, I hope I'm answering your questions and you can understand as we're going along here. How is the paper distressed at edges? I'm not quite sure what you mean by how is the paper distressed at edges? Not quite sure. You mean like along here, how is it distressed? If that's what you mean, I used my palm sander and I just distressed the wood and then I added my graphics. Yes, it's distressed now um, because of me sanding it before I put on my graphics. I have my piece of wood completely ready to go, sanded and um, distressed, and then I add my graphics. So as soon as I rub the graphics off, it's ready to have a top coat and seal it up. The paper looks distressed. No, the paper's not distressed. It might be just the camera angle that it's, uh, it's showing that it looks kind of distressed. I'm gonna just dip in and go in a circular motion and rub all these off. And if you, these are, these make really great personalized gifts too. If you're handy at a graphic program, you can make up people's names or last names and do these up and put a little bit of a twist on it. Make some ornaments, personalized ornaments. Canva is a really great uh, program for that. If you're handy with Canva, and you don't need the pro version, you can make up some pretty simple graphics, personalized graphics with some nice fonts if you wanna do some of these with like specific names on them. How do you make your own paint? I have a full tutorial on my channel, how to make chalk paint. So I will add that down below in the description and uh, you can check that out. It's a really simple recipe and it comes together really quickly and it's really affordable. Okay, I don't feel any more paper coming off that. That one's done. The only thing with this is it is kind of messy while you're doing it. You're gonna have little bits of pieces of paper everywhere, but I just clean it up when it's all done. There we go. Okay, let's do this one. Yeah, if you are familiar with Canva, you can do up some pretty cute little personalized ornaments or names and stuff like that. And the only thing is if you don't have a pro version, I don't think you can reverse your text in Canva. You have to have a paid, a paid subscription for that. So you might have to, if you've made something and you don't have a paid version, you might have to take your graphic, download it to computer, and then put it in Google Docs and reverse it. Um, and I do have a tutorial on how to reverse graphics in Google Docs also that is helpful to guide you along. If you've tried, if you're just joining and you have tried this technique, um, and you're having a, any difficulties, now is the time to shoot me a message and I can guide you along. And the other option that we have too is I'm always on Facebook and Instagram and you can send me a picture. And 99% of the time when I see a picture, I know exactly what went wrong and I can let you know and we can fix it. So. If you've asked here and then you've tried it and you're still having some struggles and you're following me over on Facebook or Instagram, shoot me a photo and I can help you out. Would be great to share with you what I've made from watching you. Yeah, and that's the other thing is if you follow me over on those platforms and you've made some projects, I would love to see what you're creating. So uh, you can send me pictures of your finished projects too. Plus it gives me some inspiration, I love seeing what other people are making and a lot of the times I'll see stuff and I'll go oh my I like I never even thought of doing that and you know it's nice to share things around um yeah I hope that helped out Missy okay we got a little bit in the corner here I can still where do I find you so you can find me on Facebook Instagram TikTok. I also have a website that you can send me an email through my website. Uh, our, just look up, just Google our upcycled life and you will find me very easy on every platform. Yes, and on my website, I have a button right to my personal email so you can send something there and then you're sure to uh, 
you're, you're going to be sure that I will get your message. Sometimes on Instagram and Facebook, things can, I get a lot of messages and stuff like that. So sometimes it takes a bit for me to get through. But if you head to my website, you can find me. You're welcome, Jenny. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I love this one. I have a bundle on Etsy that my daughter, so my daughter, because computer and technology and stuff, my daughter works for me full time and she's so good at keeping on top of everything in my Etsy store. So she put together a bundle of over 55 graphics, all Christmas theme in Etsy. If you want to grab those, you're gonna get all of these graphics there and you can download them to your computer and you can craft with them if that's something that you want to look into. There we go. I don't feel any more paper on that one. That one looks like it's done and it's good to go. And let's do this one. We're just gonna dampen it until we can just start to see the graphics show through. Okay, once you've taken off the paper, do you usually seal it with anything? Yep, so I seal it up with poly acrylic sealer. I like, and you can get any sort of finish. You can get the matte, you can get satin, you can get glossy, whatever you prefer. I don't like using Mod Podge as a top coat. I find it's kind of cloudy, it's kind of heavy looking. So when I finish these, I always put some poly acrylic on them and they look really great. Okay, so this one, Snowflakes are Kisses from Heaven. This is a really popular graphic over the holidays for anybody that's lost a loved one throughout the year and you're really stuck trying to find something to buy for them. This is really nice to put on a little sign or you can put it on a little glass jar or bottle, put some flowers in it and they make a really nice little present for somebody that's that's lost a loved one. And we're just, I can feel all the paper rolling up underneath my fingers. These ones are being very good to me today. Sometimes, you know, you struggle and you might rub little bits and pieces off as you go along. This is never perfect. It's always, you know, you're always bound to have little bits and pieces that are gonna rub off here and there, but these ones are behaving today. They're doing good. Oh, we got somebody that's crafting along with me. Excellent. And you're doing the same technique. So much fun. I love doing this technique and making old like really vintage farmhouse looking signs on scrap pieces of salvaged wood that I found. That's my favorite thing to do with this technique. I'm so glad that I'm able to help you guys out. My main mission with my channel is to teach and educate people that are just starting off crafting and are new to a lot of things or just even people that have been crafting for a long time, but you're just looking for inspiration, I'm always glad to help out and, and hope when you're watching my videos that you can always find something that inspires you. Enjoy your day, Jolene. She's off to work. She's in New Zealand and she's heading off to work. So enjoy your day. Okay, I'm just getting the last bits and pieces of paper off here. I can feel it still balling up underneath my fingers so I know I don't have it all. We're just going to dip my fingers a little bit again. Has anybody gone into Christmas mode yet? It's still early for me. I, I've done a lot of Christmas decor videos but I haven't got my tree up yet. I might wait till next week before I do that. Okay, I can still feel a little bit of paper coming off. But I think we're almost there. And it's one of those things where you think you have it all off and then you just go back in and you might have just a little bit more and then you're finished. So that one looks good. Another shelf sitter sits right up. Snowflakes are kisses from heaven. So cute. 
Let's do this one. This is a longer one. I'm going to dampen that paper until we can just start to see the graphics show through. Do you paint the Mod Podge on the wood and add the graphic or put the Mod Podge on the graphic and apply to the wood? Great question because I skipped that step when I started this video today because I'd already done my graphics. I print my graphics off. I put the Mod Podge on the paper and then I apply it to the wood. Um, I find you don't need very much Mod Podge to do this technique and I find when you're putting it on the wood, it just kind of gets too thick. So I like to put it on the paper don't put any Mod Podge on the wood, just the paper, and then apply it to the piece of wood and then press all of the bubbles and wrinkles out of it, set it aside and let it dry completely. Meredith, you are super helpful. I just bought a laser printer. I needed a new one after the, after house fire. Oh my goodness, I hope you were, everybody was okay. So I went for it and my daughter put a tree up yesterday. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you got a laser printer because if you are making these signs or doing some of this kind of cra crafting, um, it's so much easier with a laser printer. And your toner, compared to an inkjet printer, the toner lasts forever. You can get so many prints out of a cartridge on a laser printer compared to buying ink for, uh, from an inkjet printer. What type of Mod Podge are you using? I am using Mod Podge Matte. That's my go-to when I'm doing signs. You are, um, you, you can use the Mod Podge Gloss, but you have to be mindful you're gonna have a glossy finish when you rub off your paper. And I find that it doesn't blend as well. So I always go with the Mod Podge Matte and it works best. That's good, I'm glad everybody was fine, Meredith. Uh, except when you did the iron-on transfer, applied to the wood first, yes. So that's just a different technique and you can apply it to the wood first and then put your graphic on and then iron it. So yeah, that's correct, it's just a different technique. And it can get overwhelming when you're just starting because there are so many different techniques that it's easy to get mixed up with you know, what, which one is this and that. And I do have a, uh, a video and I put all of my transfer videos together all in one video. It's a long one, but if you're just learning and you want to have them all in one spot, um, that's a good video to, to look up. I think it was 16, 16 transfer methods. Again, I'll put that down below afterwards and you can check that out because uh, it's a really great resource and it does everything from iron on to reverse to decoupaging with an inkjet so many different ways um does copies from fedex work yes it will work and if you're just joining we had the conversation a little bit earlier that when you're going to those printing companies they use a really thick good quality paper and that's not to our advantage when we're doing this technique. We wanna use something that's not a lot of paper to rub off, so you wanna use a really cheap computer paper. So if you have to go to some place and have it printed off, ask them if they can use the cheapest computer paper that they have, and then you'll have an easier time doing that transfer method. The shelf sitters would be great Christmas gifts for the office, secret Santa, or in case the neighbor brings over something and you didn't plan a gift. 100%. And they're so easy to whip together. You know, you can put these together, seal them up so they're all ready to go, stick them in a corner, and then you have them ready last minute to give as gifts. And they do. They make really great little last minute gifts. And as far as this goes, these were free. It's free pieces of wood. All I'm using is a little tiny bit of Mod Podge, some paper, a little bit of paint. So there's not a lot of cost in it either. And I'm all about being thrifty, saving some money, not breaking the bank at Christmas when we can do something that's homemade and beautiful and somebody's gonna love to receive. Um, I learned from your four transfer methods. Perfect, I'm glad. I always hope that my videos are helpful and you guys can learn something or I can help guide you along. So it's always nice when 
I get some positive messages that they were helpful for you. Okay, so let's do this one. I don't think we've done this graphic yet. This one is Believe in the Magic of Christmas. It's a pretty one. And of course, this is these are all Christmas themes, but you can take this technique and apply it to any holiday or any quote or different colors. You don't have, I did red because they're Christmas, but um, if you were just doing everyday signs, you could do the base coat black. Uh, if you're selling, you selling little signs like these, you wanna stick to the neutral colors, stick to your black and white or gray because they'll sell, they'll sell easier. Uh, but for the holidays, I like to sneak in a little bit of, a little bit of color and a little bit of red. And we're just, I'm gonna dampen my finger a little bit. Go in a circular motion. And rub all of this off. Now, this is a kind of a fun one because what you could do, because my laser printer only prints black. I'm, all, I'm in the market to get a laser color printer, but I haven't done it yet. Soon, that maybe after Christmas, I'm gonna pick one up. But you could do a pop of color on this. So the poinsettia here, you could just take a really small paintbrush and a little bit of green acrylic paint and paint your little leaves and use the end of your paintbrush and just dot the three little berries with a little bit of red and add a little bit of color to your sign. Let it dry completely and then seal it up with the polyacrylic sealer and it would be good to go and it just gives it a nice little finished touch. And if you're just joining, let me know where you're watching from. It's always fun to see where everybody is hanging out and crafting with me here. I can still feel the paper rolling up. The nice thing about doing it live here also is when I'm doing a regular video, sometimes, you know, there's, it's sped up or it's uh, not in true time. So when we're here on live, you can see exactly how much time it's taking me to rub these off. And it puts it in perspective that it's not taking me 30 seconds. Like it's taking me a minute or two to rub all of these papers all of this paper off so I like when I can do these lives and be a little bit more accountable for how long it takes and we've got Ohio we've got Jacksonville Florida Santa Cruz California I've actually been to Santa Cruz and it was beautiful there along the beach South Carolina we spend a lot of time in South Carolina down uh, along the ocean we got Missouri and Texas Thanks for joining along, everyone. And yes, day before, I got a couple videos. If you are ready for Christmas videos, I've got some good ones. I did the other day, I had a whole bunch of Christmas bags that I'd saved from last year. I never throw them out. I always save them and I gather up everybody else's that don't want them or they're gonna get thrown out and I just tuck them away. Well, I had a whole bunch of them. So I did a video on 10 different ways to upcycle Christmas bags. So if you haven't seen that one, it was a lot of fun. Head back after this one and have a watch and get some inspiration for some Christmas bag DIYs. And I also yesterday put up a video of, I think it's three or four um, ways to make Christmas ornaments and there are lots of fun projects too so don't miss out on those ones head back and have a watch a lot of these are doubles oh here's this is one we haven't done one yet oh I like this one this one's got a bubble in it though hmm we might uh, I might be able to show you what happens when it doesn't transfer everywhere it's supposed to so let's see it might be okay but I got a little bit of a bubble right there so it might not have transferred and we got Virginia, Myrtle Beach. I love Myrtle Beach. We spent a lot of time there as a kid. Okay, we're just gonna rub, starting in the middle. This is one of my favorite graphics that I designed. I love designing graphics. I'll sit in front of the computer all day and just design away. And then they end up in my Etsy store or they end up in my Patreon graphic club. If any of you are not familiar with my graphic club, that has been so much fun. The way it works is 
uh, every week, every Friday night, anything that I have listed in my Etsy store the week before, which are guaranteed to be five graphics, um, get sent to your inbox automatically. So you can download them and craft with them right away as soon as I get in my Etsy store. And it's set up on uh, Patreon. So that is listed in the description already if you wanna check that out and you wanna join us over on Patreon on the Graphic Club. I'm always sending out freebies too, lots of freebies over there. Last week's freebie was, um, oh, I did a really beautiful November calendar that you could print, put on your fridge, keep track of all of your meetings or appointments. That was a fun one to do. So yeah, the Patreon is a, a real, if you are a crafter and you're a reseller, that's a really great way to get affordable graphics. None of them are uh, copyrighted either. So you can download them, you can craft with them, make as many things as you want without any issues. I was so excited to find you are doing a live. Definitely excited for Christmas videos. The Christmas baubles were awesome. Yes, I did some really cute little Christmas ornaments in that video, it was a lot of fun. So how cute is this graphic? Little vintage Santa, have a holly jolly Christmas. Over the next week or two, I've designed some really beautiful um, Christmas graphics and I'm excited to get them in my Etsy store. So Kirsten's working away really hard right now, getting them uploaded and getting them ready for my graphic club. So stay tuned and keep checking back at the at, on my Etsy store because they're beautiful. Okay, we're doing pretty good here. I can still feel the paper rolling up underneath. And if you're just joining and you're having troubles with these um, techniques, as I said before, follow me over on Instagram or on Facebook and uh, you can send me pictures and I can guide you along. I can look at a picture and I can tell within a minute of going through and asking a few questions and looking at the photos, what is going, what's happening and what is wrong. And I can help you out and save you a lot of trial and error and time. So don't be afraid. You're not bothering me. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help you guys learn how to do this technique, have fun crafting. And especially if you're, you want to start selling some of these things and making a little bit of side money. Um, I'm more than happy to help you out and guide you along the way. Can I use this method on a big seashell? I don't know why you couldn't, as long as it's a smooth surface. This technique is tricky to do if it's a textured surface. So if your seashell has a lot of texture to it, then I would say it's probably gonna be pretty difficult. If it's flat, um, I would say it probably would work okay. I know a lot of people will on the seashells, they'll decoupage and they're beautiful. I've seen a lot of people do the napkin decoupage on seashells and do it on the inside of these beautiful shells and they look really nice. I recently found some old snow babies. Do you have any tips on cleaning the yellowing? I tried what department said and it didn't work. Hmm, no, I don't know. Maybe somebody here in the chat can help her out if there's any tips or anything of cleaning and getting rid of, rid of some yellowing on some old snow babies. If anyone can help her out. And I'm just dipping my fingers in here. And working away. I'm gonna stay live on here until I finish up these signs. So just ask away if you have any questions or it doesn't even have to be about this technique. If you have another technique and you're having issues with it, um, ask away and I can help you out. These are coming off really well. It's gonna be a really nice little shelf sitter jingle all the way. And we did one of these earlier and somebody said how cute this would look with a little ribbon and maybe some little bells from the dollar store, um, hot glued on the top. That would be really cute. Okay. There we go. I think that one feels pretty good. We got all the paper off of that one. We're doing pretty good. Look what we've done so far. 
got all these ones done already. It doesn't take long to put these together. Let's do this one. Oh, and we've got Carla popping in from Holland. And I don't know, is it morning, afternoon, evening in Holland? I, I don't know what the time change is. Right now here it is 2.30 in the afternoon. Starting in the middle, just rubbing that cheap computer paper off. It's coming off really nicely. And this is all done on free scrap wood that I got. I didn't have to pay anything for the wood. I just had to paint it, add my graphics, and I was good to go, which is really great too. If you can find that free wood in your reseller, it really cuts down on your costs for your projects. You'll find if you start doing these and you're looking for scrap wood, you're gonna find scrap wood in, the, in places that you never even knew there was scrap wood. You'll look at pieces in a whole different new light. Uh, it's 20, it's in the evening in Holland, yes. The sealer that you used for these, does that weather proof too or would you use something different? Great question. Okay, so if you're making these signs and they're gonna be outside, you can buy an outdoor polycrylic sealer. Uh, it's an outdoor version. And that's what I would use if you're making something for the outdoors, opposed to using the indoor one. Uh, it will just stand up better and it'll seal it. Now, if you're gonna have it outside, instead of like when I'm, when I'm doing these just as shelf sitters, I'll just put some polyacrylic on the top. I won't paint the whole thing. But if I'm doing a sign for outside, I have the outdoor version of the polyacrylic and I seal everything, top, sides, bottom, back, because it's gonna be out in the elements and you want it sealed up really well. I have made some signs, I've done that technique, used the outdoor polycrylic sealer, and some of them have been outside for five, six years, and they still look just like the day that I made them. So it does seal it up really well. Your fingerprints have not been affected with this technique. No, I actually am not rubbing very hard. I'm, it's just a light, like I'm not, if, if you're scrubbing, you're rubbing too hard. You don't need to. It's just a light finger until you can just start to feel the paper underneath and uh, it comes right up. Now I might've gotten a few calluses maybe because I do so many of them, but you don't have to rub very hard. And for my friends that do have arthritic fingers or um, joints, you can start this with a the rag and rub off that first top layer that will help your fingers so you don't have to rub as much. And then just do the last little bit with your fingers. But I do find you have to use your fingers for the finishing touch or it just um, you just can't feel the paper rubbing off underneath. Okay, that one's pretty good. You can see we've got quite a pile of uh, scrap paper here. And if you are really thrifty and really into not throwing a lot of stuff out, you can throw all of this. If you're making paper, if you've ever made homemade paper, this is just paper. Throw it in a little container with the rest of your scrap paper and turn it into homemade paper if you didn't want to throw it out. And we've got Sarah here from the United Kingdom. Welcome, Sarah. Okay, we got another Merry Christmas one. Start in the, actually, let, let's do this. I'm gonna show you how you can take the top layer. So I've squeezed almost all the water out of this. You don't want this soaking wet if you're going to use the rag to take that top layer off. And just do a circular motion. Do not press very hard, just very lightly circular motion and you can get that top layer of paper off without using your fingertips. So you see, you can see it's coming off, but you, the, the trick with this is you do not want to scrub very hard. If you do, you're going to rub that graphic off. You just kind of have to go just lightly. That paper is going to roll up underneath and come off. And I've there already, we've kind of taken off that top layer. Now there's still paper on there. So this is where I say, you're gonna have to go back with your finger and just do that last little bit 
but you can get the, the initial big bulk of the paper off with the rag. Okay. And we're just gonna rub, get all the little bits of pieces of paper. Now you can see, if I bring this closer, see all the little bits of paper coming off? So you know that you haven't gotten it all off yet. There, we're getting pretty close. You can also use your palm or your hand. And all of these graphics, like I said before, they're all available in my Etsy store. If you want to grab them, there's there's a whole bundle of these put together, or you can buy them, whoops, or you can buy them separately. If you're a Patreon Graphic Club member, uh, you get a 70% off discount code for all of my Etsy store. So you can grab some of these if you don't already have them. Or if you're a channel member, you get a 50% discount code. So you can use that too if you want to save some extra money on these graphics. So there, I think we got this one pretty good. Let's do another Merry, oh, this is another Merry Christmas. These ones are good sellers. So I did quite a few of these ones. Sarah says, I've just started doing the reverse technique. Everyone is loving my creations and I've learned so much from you. Excellent. I am so glad to share my expertise on this reverse technique. I really have kind of um, figured out all the little tips and tricks to doing this technique. And I kind of consider, I guess I consider myself a bit of an expert on this because I've done so many of them. So I'm glad I can help you guys out and you guys have figured it out and been able to make some really fun DIYs and crafts with it. And any graphics that you have for a project are you and you have to um, size them. I size them in Google Docs. I throw my graphic in Google Docs. I measure my piece of wood and then size my graphic to fit on the piece of wood and then print it off. It's really easy to do. A lot of people, when they're just beginning, they'll buy the graphic and of course it comes out on a sheet of eight by 10 paper and then they can't figure out how to put it on their project where what you have to do is you have to put it in a Word program or Google Docs, size it, and then print it off. So, but once you do it two or three times, it's really simple to do. Um, thank you, June. Quick reminder to viewers, remember to like and give a thumbs up to the video. That really helps. It really helps out my video and my content when you guys comments and you like my videos it uh, it helps it reach more people more crafting friends and we got Genevieve here from Quebec you're not very far from me I'm just kind of well I don't know where you are in Quebec Quebec's very big um, I'm just outside of Ottawa and Guernsey love your tutorials thank you so much glad you're enjoying okay this one was easy it I can't <laughs> getting away on me I haven't had any fly off onto the floor yet though, so we're doing good. I think I got almost the paper off this one. This one rubbed really quickly. And like I said, it's nice when I can do these in live time because then you can see how long it actually takes to rub the paper off of these. It actually doesn't take very long. We got Joyce here from Minnesota. Welcome. We're doing some Mod Podge reverse graphic transfers on scrap pieces of wood that I have painted with some chalk paint. I've added some Mod Podge graphics with my Mod Podge mat. Printed them off on my laser printer, reversing the text, added the Mod Podge, placed them on the piece of wood, let it sit overnight, and now here I am rubbing off the paper. And we have Minnesota. We've got Paulette watching from Guyana, I hope I said that right. And Oklahoma, welcome. You never have too many crafting friends. I love seeing everybody pop in, even if you can only stay for a minute or two. I love when you can pop in and hang out with me for a few minutes and, and craft together. Okay. And this one's coming off really well too. You know what, I've made all of these signs. I'm, I'm gonna be very proud of myself. I've made all of these signs 
and I don't think I've had one where I've rubbed off any of the graphic. It's done pretty good. They've all behaved today. That doesn't usually happen. I usually have one that has a mind of its own and I rub off a little bit of the graphic. So, um, I love how quick the process is. Yeah, it's a really fun, quick, easy process. It's cozy to listen and look at you live. Oh, thanks, Carla. I hope I'm relaxing. There's sometimes, <laughs> sometimes where I think I'm just kind of like a squirrel all over the place. So it's nice when I can do these lives and I have to sit still and I just have to work and just chat. It's kind of nice that you get forced to do that and slow down because sometimes I just go so fast, 100 miles an hour. So when I'm doing this technique, it makes me slow down. I have to. Believe in the magic of Christmas. And this is like that one that I did earlier where I said you can use the acrylic paint and paint your little points out of here with a little bit of green. Um, you could paint little red dots for the berries. Be very pretty. Uh, we have Chattanooga, Tennessee. We've got Puerto Rico. Can this technique be done with an inkjet printed graphic? And how do I do it with a photo? Yes, you can do this technique with an ink jet printer, but it is a little bit more tricky. It's a little bit harder to rub off the paper and not have the ink smear or rub off. If you're going to be doing lots of these, like I said earlier, it's, you know, it's really worthwhile investing if you can afford it in a laser printer. In the long run, it's going to save you a lot of time. If it's not in your budget right now, you can get away with a ink jet printer and just practice. Just don't use a lot of water because that ink wants to have a tendency to kind of run a little bit. So that's the one trick with the ink printer. Can you use photos? Absolutely. I did a photo of um, a picture from us camping. It's actually probably a year and a half, two years ago that I did that video. And it was uh, inkjet, inkjet printing a photo. Uh, and it was, it turned out beautiful. So it can be done. If you have a chance to check that video out, it will show you step by step of how to do it with a photo. I'll put that link down below and um, you can check that out. And it's one nice way because a lot of people don't have the laser printers that they have only have black ink. And if you want to do a transfer with color and you only have an inkjet printer, it's nice if you can do this technique with that and you can. But like I said, you just have to go a little bit slower little bit more little tricks of doing it and that video will guide you along. Australia, loved your videos and I've learned so much. Thanks Kathy, glad you're enjoying. Can you use a wood burning technique? You know that's something that I have never really tried is a wood burning tool. Uh, you could try it. Um, there's all probably all kinds of amazing creators on YouTube that would teach you how to do that. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience in that, but it would be fun to learn. It's okay to be as <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thanks, Carla. Okay, great. Yeah, Joyce, have a look for that video. It's a uh, inkjet photo transfer, and you should be able to just uh, look it up on my channel and you'll find it. And it's a, a beautiful photo that um, I did with my ink inkjet printer. We're getting there. I got one more after this one and then we're finished all of our signs and then I'll take these out and I'll seal them up and they'll be good to go. Yeah, this one's almost done. Oh, there's a bit of paper at the top. You can just feel the paper rolling up underneath your fingers so you know if you've got it all off or not. And then another question that I get asked about are pricing these little signs. And I do have a formula. I have a, uh, a booklet on how I price my DIYs that's in my Etsy store. Um, and it's a nice little guideline to use if you're a reseller and you're not quite sure how to price your things. It's, it's a really great formula for uh, little projects. I mean, if it's a big project and you have a whole lot of time in it, then that formula probably isn't going to be the best for you, but um, that would be a really good resource if you want to learn how to price something like this. And actually, I will grab, 
I've got a booklet here. I'll show you. Here's the, uh, here it is right here. This is just a booklet. It, and it goes through every step of how to price your items and how much you money you've got into your projects, the wholesale cost, the retail cost, Everything spit right out in a little nice little book that you can print out and use to price your DIYs. So this is in my Etsy store if you want to check that out. It's a great, great little booklet. Inkjet printer. The paper would be more lightweight. Well, no, you can use any type of paper. The same type of paper that you would use in an inkjet would be the same type of paper that you would use in the laser printer. So I don't think that would... Um, I don't think that would matter. You could use the same type of paper. Okay, last one. We've got North Pole Milk and Cookies Company. Start in the middle. All my neighbors want me to start an Etsy store and I'm just a little bit nervous about it. Well, you know what? You don't know until you try. It's worth giving it a go. It is a lot of work to get it set up initially, but if you've got a really good product, um, it might be it might be something to think about. I myself, I sell everything that I make locally. It's very difficult and very expensive to ship things here in Canada, which takes away from a lot of your profit and time. So I sell most of my stuff on Facebook Marketplace. And I also have a local little store that, that takes a lot of my stuff too. That might be something that maybe you can kind of test the waters there before you open up an Etsy store and see how that works for you uh, before you go to the work of opening up a whole Etsy store you might find that you found your little customer base right in your backyard okay almost there and it's been fun hanging out with you today and finishing up these little signs and being able to help some of you guys along with any issues that you've been having with the Mod Podge technique. Make sure you check out after this video, after this live, my video that I did on upcycling Christmas gift bags. That one was lots of fun. And I also have a um, Christmas ornament video that just went out too that was a lot of fun you can watch. They always bring me stuff to upcycle and I get paid in meatball. Hey, <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good, uh, a pretty good deal to me, especially when I'm not a cook. My husband's a cooker around cooker, the chef around here. Uh, so anybody that wants to pay me in food, hey, I'm all for it. Okay, that one looks really cute. I love these little bigger blocks of wood and they set really nice. So there you go. Let's clean this up. I'm going to show you all of these that we got done today. Look at this. So I have been on live for 62 minutes. So in 62 minutes with me chatting and mumbling away, we have put together all of these little signs and finished them off. So it doesn't take very long and it's lots of fun and you can use up all those free scrap of wood if you have them and give this technique a try if you haven't. Okay, I'm going to sign off and I will catch you in the next video everyone. Thanks for watching.